Welcome to the Vonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. I'm your host, Shane Rayo, too, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasadena, the Civil Liberators Paradise. Uh, for more information on this parallel network currently being built, uh, visit Pasnia, P-A-Z-N-I-A.com. One of the big steps forward took place in the last uh, p- uh, last few weeks or so, uh, when the first iteration of the Pasnia map and directory uh, was released for vetted Pasnians and self-liberators. Uh, it looks beautiful, and uh, more locations are being added often. Uh, if you haven't gotten uh, login credentials from me yet, and think you should, please do reach out. Uh, probably just miss, uh, probably just missed you somehow. Uh, so yeah, DM, uh, DM or email coordinator at pasnia.com. And uh, if you already have or gain access, uh, definitely check it out. And uh, please consider adding a location to uh, yourself. Uh, the form to do that is at pasnia.com forward slash join. Uh, oh, yeah, and the link to the map is pasnia.com forward slash map. But again, if you aren't logged in, you'll basically just get an access to an iPage. page. So that's a necessary first step if you haven't done that. Um, now, another big step forward is Pasnia List, uh, the Craigslist for self-liberators. Uh, current categories include looking for work and help wanted like you'd find on most of your um, sites like this. Uh, proxy merchant services, health and wellness topics uh, for sale, crypto anarchy topics, homestead and contractor services for bigger projects uh, or skill sets, and arbitration and security. Uh, anyone can post, anyone can view. Uh, go check it out and see if there's something you'd like to offer on Pasnia List. Uh, Pasnia.com forward slash list is the link for that. Uh, finally, I basically did a total redesign of the entire website. I think it's a thousand percent better than what it was before. Uh, but definitely let me, let me know what you think. Uh, Pasnia, P-A-Z. NIA.com is a place to go check that out. But uh, yeah, anyway, today I, uh, I welcome a first time guest to the podcast, uh, another stellar reference and connection from Matthew Raymer of Content Safe uh, and Anomalous Design. Uh, Trent Larson is the creator of the Timeshare application, a slick mobile app or website, uh, somewhat similar to Pasnia List, I guess, as I just mentioned it, but uh, with a built in reputation system uh, and a lot more. Uh, I guess uh, one one thing that comes to mind is instead of say hiring someone for freelance work and paying them in Bitcoin, uh, you know, kind of the you know trading for a medium of exchange, you might trade work and services on each other's projects. Uh, and like Rex's greenhouse timeshare vision uh, out west, uh, I really appreciate these innovative ideas uh, and the folks coming up with these much needed uh, alternative solutions. You know, just kind of pushing the paradigm beyond what you know what people normally think about. Um, so that's always always great. Uh, so today, today we'll learn about Trent's background and uh, what, what got him to think of and begin building the Timeshare app. We'll learn all about it and how it could be of use to self-liberators or Pasnians and uh, really whatever whatever else we get to today. Um, without further ado, Trent, welcome to the Vani Podcast, my friend. Uh, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, it's so cool to be on this podcast that I've been working at for a while, but uh, yeah, Great to finally talk to you in person, real time. For sure, yeah, yeah. And I guess, uh, I guess you you have been to a couple of Pasadena assemblies, or at least you know very briefly, um, and gotten to introduce it a this a little bit, you know this this project and kind of yourself. But um, yeah, I guess I'm excited to to go a lot more in depth, uh, much more focused conversation. So thanks for being here. And uh, I guess let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, or let, and I guess I'll mention for the video viewers um, that the video was working on Jitsi, and now it just stopped working again for I guess bandwidth concerns. But hopefully that'll clear up and that'll will come back through. But um, anyway, Trent, um, yeah, get, you know, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, you know, give us your background. Uh, who are you, and uh, you know, what do you do? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm out here in Utah. Uh, have a <laughs> pioneer ancestry, and uh, we came from Mormon background. So we've got, uh, you know, I have this history of of people who've, you know, tried to provi- provi- provide for themselves, and and also, you know, pursue what your you know, passionate about and and what you think you need to do for your family without the intervention of outsiders. Um, So I I really appreciate your your focus on on this, uh, you know, being invulnerable to to coercion. Um, So I I grew up in a Republican household and, you know, they were, you know, interested in everything to do with entrepreneurship and everything. And uh, I, I grew up with a love of programming and experimentation, went to school and got a PhD in 2002 and figured I, I had to go into industry and, and learn all I could. So uh, I've been working since then. And in 2014, I got into the Overstock Medici Ventures. Uh, that's a company that Patrick Burns started up because he saw how some people on Wall Street had actually 
uh, almost tanked his company and they used naked short selling to attack what he had. And so he wanted to create a fair stock market. So we started and, and then 2016 actually released that, uh, that was called T zero. And, you know, they, since then they haven't focused on the real philosophical foundation anymore. They're just doing digital shares. After that, I went to Medici land governance. So this is trying to apply blockchain principles to the ownership of land, especially in Africa and South America. So it's uh, you know showing the provenance of ownership and you know, trying to get a fair, you know, trustworthy ledger and bypass any of the corruption that could happen in some of these systems. So that's where I've been working. I still work there. Uh, I also am part of the Bountiful Voluntarist community. So since 2018, we've been running this every week and uh, we get the voluntarists, anarchists showing up and, you know, we share philosophy, we share tools and uh, we do events together at breakfast and, and it's a good time. So yeah, that's my background. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. So I guess I'm, I'm just, I guess I, I'm, I'm curious. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's really interesting. So I guess the first thing is that, um, you can you're kind of working on some of these, you know, um, land and you know, I guess land and, um, you know, blockchain systems. That's part of your, you know, your, I guess your, 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 I guess your, your nine to five per se, which I, which is, which is fascinating. Um, and then the other thing is I want to, I guess uh, if you could, uh, you tell us more about uh, the community you have, you have out there. Um, you said you're out in Utah. You've, you've been having weekly meetings like that for, for a while. It's, you know, Rex is out there in Utah. Um, which I'm not sure if you guys have been on the on one of the same assemblies before, but, um, but yeah, he's got a, a yeah, again, a, a really cool timeshare project with greenhouses going on out there. So I guess, yeah, could you, could you talk a little more about the, about your community? How many, how many people you got, you know, uh, or I guess just kind of give, give us an idea of, you know, what, what's, what you got going on out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can go and see it at bountiful Amazing. Uh, we have a history. We've, we started with meetup, So, uh, started with bitcoin meetups and that was great for a while but then i thought you know what what is it we really want to do so let's focus on voluntarism i've got you know rotating people <laughs> we've had people move in move out i you know last week we had three seven of us um kids have come um we've put on some events here locally um we've internally you know traded with some mobile coin and uh, used Bitcoin to, to buy some things between one another. Mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to make things actually work together here in the community. We don't live all close to each other right now. Um, and so it's, it's kind of a distributed group, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, close enough that we can meet physically. We've met virtually a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I have met Rex, and we talk every once in a while, and I, I you know, have invested a little bit into his project and plan nice. to invest more, and I, I really hope to see that grow. Yeah, that'll, yeah, um, certainly. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys are connected and have, uh, um, you know, have corresponded. Um, that's good. Um, I'm excited to talk to him again. I'm sure he's way, way far ahead. He kind of, he, he's, he kind of just like puts his head down and works. And then like six months later, it's like, holy hell, like what's, what's he got? What's he up to? What's he doing now? But, um, anyway, um, anyway, uh, well, that's, that's all great, man. Um, that's all great. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always great to hear about, um, you know, more of those, uh, you know, similar volunteers communities that are out there that, you know, you never really, you wouldn't really know about, um, I mean, you may not know about, it, and there's a lot of them, um, a lot more than what I think we, we really think there are. That's why um, I think, you know, just very slowly grassroots, like that map is going to, is going to fill up, um, you know, uh, the Pazian map, and then also the time strap is going to, going to fill up, um, you know, very, very soon. Um, once the, once a lot of these, you know, these connections continue to be made, um, it's really, yeah, really, really exciting on that front. But um, yeah, I guess uh, you said you, um, and I guess another side question, your experience, uh, programming and, and pro programming and software experience. Like, could you could you talk a little bit a little bit about that? It's like uh, I'm I'm just curious what people you know what people's skill sets are and you know what what's your your focus is on on programming. I guess like what what languages, uh, et cetera. Oh yeah, so let's see. It started out with Java, and uh, in in school, it's fun. Got to play with all kinds of languages. Um, so I've dabbled a lot in, in just about everything, C, even Perl. 
and lately it's Python and Node uh, have been the languages. Um, but the, the exciting things are the platforms, it seems like nowadays, right? I mean, the blockchain platforms and trying to, uh, you know, figure out the right way to use smart contracts or AI platforms and what are the pipelines for feeding data into these and, and getting good answers out. Um, it's cool. There's a, a whole contingent of people who believe AI needs to be decentralized. And um, there's a, a meetup in, in Denver next month about decentralizing AI. And hmm. there, there's so many tools for that. So that's, that's kind of what I'm excited about is, is those kinds of tools that uh, we can all leverage. And, and you know, I, ideally, we should be able to run anything on our laptops. You know, this whole paradigm of having to interact with a server somewhere else that somebody else owns for all of our data. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's something I want to get away from, you know, personally. It's like, I want to be able to run everything myself. And uh, you'll, you'll see that a little later in the, the time of but uh, you're probably the same way. I mean, you want to hold your data and have access to it without being beholden to you know, Amazon or Google, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's my background. And I love the, um, uh, like I say, working in blockchain, love the um, ideas of free, of money that is independent of manipulation. And so that's why that's exciting to me. Um, yeah. That, did that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, and even more so. Um, yeah, A is something I got. I got to get into. Jamin's Jamin's pushed me in that direction a couple of times because um, he's he's been using it, um, you know, just to save a bunch of time. He's got a bunch of like dis, you know, disjointed notes. Um, he's not, you know, he's a hardware hacker. He's not a, you know, a writer or marketer. So he's just got like this big jumbled up notes. And he's been running it through AI to like get readable, like really simple to read and understand. And he's like, this is amazing, dude. Like, you got to start using it. It's like. I guess I do, I guess I do I do a little bit. Um, I, I use uh, the the I guess the AI voice stuff, but that's not really that that cool or that advanced, except for the fact that the voice is really 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 good oh, now. You know what? I bet. At, yeah, yeah. But at some point, I'm gonna bet. I mean, you've got hundreds of these uh, conversations that you've run, and maybe even writings. Um, I think it's gonna be fun when you feed all of this into a model. Oh, yeah. create something that is going to represent you pretty well. It's like your descendants will be able to ask questions just by what you've already created. That's interesting. Yeah. And the, the other thing that along those same lines is a Rayo GPT where um, I take all his writings over like 20 years and the same sort of concept would, again, this is down the road. This would be a more fun project. It's not like the, the map and that sort of stuff is more important now, but five years down the road when I can get, well, I'm, I'm back to it now. I'm digitizing all of Vanu life one through 10 right now. Um, which I'm actually back to doing that for like four years, but there's still so many that I've, I have to do. Um, it'll take a long time, but yeah, I'm excited. Once I get all those digitized and fed into like chat GBT, it, it, it'd be cool to, uh, um, it'd be a cool experiment. Um, I've seen some cool, I've seen some cool examples. So, um, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. For sure. So I guess, uh, um, yeah, I guess let's go ahead and uh, I want to I want to get more about, uh, you know, get into the, the I guess the nuts and bolts of uh, of uh, the Time Safari app. And I don't know why I've been calling it the Timeshare app. Um, I've, been, I've been looking at it for like three days and I guess my my, my eyes just misread that. Um, but anyway, the Time Safari app, um, I guess. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit about, uh, you know, give us an overview of uh, the purpose, purpose and vision for it. And uh, I guess kind of more of those those bigger questions we can dive into specifics from there. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, purpose and vision. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, we're here talking together because we want to feed people's souls, right? I mean, we, everybody is powerful if they just realize it. And, and we see the benefits of collaboration and all of this, you know, care for one another and, and how it brings connection and real meaning in life. Um, so I, I will say that that's the ultimate um motivation i tech is something that and up till now it's pretty much served to make people independent of one another i guess make it so that we communicate through data and platforms and it's like okay how can we make something that actually brings people together so the the 
goal of this particular app, I, I came about because I was thinking about what I would want in my community. To, if, if we were in a voluntary scenario in my community where I was with the right people, taking care of our basic needs, you know, food, clothing, shelter, those, you know, were being handled and, and we were starting to take management of water systems and, you know, roads and security for our neighborhood, you know, what would we do? Well, would we be trading dollars for these things together? And it's like, no, people would be jumping into the areas that they have interest and skills and, you know, providing time. And, you know, maybe there's some aspect of, hey, these activities of uh, what sewer management, <laughs> you know, you don't have to spend as much time on that because that's probably something that's not desirable. But, you know, some of the other activities, um, you know, like security, we could handle by walking around the, the neighborhood. And, and these are just things that would take time. People could, you know, offer to, to give that time. And when I see what I, is around me, I want help from people. But I don't, you know, with this project, for example, I'll keep building it and donating money. I don't need a lot of money. What I would like is for collaborators. I would love to work on these kind of projects with people. Your map is a good example. You know, it's like I want to help build out these systems so that they're in a good way by giving my time to it. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like the skilled people with the same kinds of principles are much more valuable than, you know, getting money from someone. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a, a lot of the motivation now. Um, so let me introduce it first i want to talk about the platform for just a minute because it's based on self-sovereign identity now if you have you heard that term i have yes yes good yes so for those others out there that don't know it's a technical term that uh is focused on bringing cryptography to secure our communications together and make sure we you know, are who we say we are, but also show a provenance of data. And that's important because this Time Safari app, the way it's architected, I want to make it as usable as possible, but underneath the covers, it's based on cryptographic signatures for everything you do. And I hope it's easier to use than Bitcoin wallets, but it's the same kind of underlying data where you own the data and even, you know, I, I hope to migrate it someday to something where it's directly peer-to-peer. -peer. There's no server involved. You can use some of the signal-like discovery such that the server doesn't know anything about you, but it just assists you in making connections to people around you. So that, that self-sovereign identity and that, that security is, is the foundation. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, that, that's that's good, and, and just um, something that comes to mind. And if you're working with Matthew, he's probably talked about it with you before. But it sounds very, it sounds similar to Scuttlebutt in some ways, at least the networking aspect of it, which I appreciate. Um, yeah. 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 Absolutely. So I, and I, in fact, would put it on top of Scuttlebutt if that's you know one of the right platforms. I, I, I don't not care. Right about not right now. Not right now, unfortunately. So what I care about is but yeah. But yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> What I care about is the usability. So, the uh, basic concept: if if we were to you know get to that world where, hey, time is the thing that I'm seeking out from other people, and how do I get that reward of time, um, and and also give it in donation to others, then you know that can evolve into real governance. That could evolve into voluntary governance, um, and that that's uh, yeah to describe. Uh, Time Safari mm -hmm. is the name that we've given it. And uh, shout out to Matthew Raymer for uh, helping out to develop this. So the, the idea to really help people get together is uh, be able to declare any projects or ideas that you would like to see in the world. And then, you know, just like crowdfunding, Kickstarter has crowdfunding for money. So let's... What if I could see all of these ideas that people have, around, especially around me, in my real neighborhood community mm -hmm. or in my online communities? You know, what are the ideas that they're excited about that they want to try? And 
then I can show my interest in that as well. So let me go ahead and say, yeah, I'll, I'll play with you in <laughs> this. Uh, in fact, I'll dedicate an hour of this and maybe I'll do it if you get three more people to do it. You know, if my neighbor down the street needs help with uh, setting up the gazebo, yeah, I'd love to do that. Uh, if you get two more people to help us out, I, I can't do it, you know, just you and me. So that's kind of that idea of, hey, let's see how much interest there is for these projects. So you can throw as many as you want out there. And then once you meet that threshold of people, hey, I'll, hey, I've got all these people who will do it if I have three more. And then, all right, I've got them in my list. Now let's go plan a time and do it. Um, you know, or maybe do it for a time event. Hey, I want to run a recital in three weeks and you know who would like to help me if i get four other people mm -hmm. um, i especially love it if this is really easy to use for kids you know just have young adults and and even children see uh you know the power that they have because everybody would love to get onto you know their kinds of activities if, if they take the initiative mm -hmm. so i think that would be fun to show off so yeah it's that crowdfunding for for time. And the one additional thing that I've put on the front page, which I hope will make it attractive to the people around me um, who, you know, they're not necessarily philosophically aligned with me. So I'm making it so that they can put gratitude on there. So, you know, this is a reward you can give for any project you've been part of. You know, I, I throw out there sometimes when uh, you know, people have invited me to an event and it was it was great so i put thanks on there for it um but i've there's sites like kind spring that have wonderful stories uh they where they observe their kids doing something <laughs> great or somebody else has given them something that just means a lot so that's the front page where you can say hey today and i do this every day just to get in the mood of showing gratitude to somebody who's given me something Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that will be kind of this hook for people to enjoy it and then, you know, see how that has contributed to, you know, the people around me in our neighborhood and add more. Start giving more gratitude to one another and start growing that into real projects that, that get things done. So I'll, I'll pause right yeah. there, but uh, any questions about that part? No, dude, I, I love it. Um, I love it. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, it might be surprising. You know, we talked a lot about the direct action solutions and stuff, but Seth McGuire and I are talking about doing a, a, po a podcast on, um, like, uh, like love and kindness, love, you know, love and gratitude is like two of the biggest tools in self liberation or like just in the second realm or anything. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely, definitely fantastic. On a spiritual level, gratitude's obviously, obviously important. So um, yeah, this is great. And I've been scrolling through for, yeah, that is, that's I've, been, I've been scrolling through for the, for the video viewers. And, um, you know, this is, this is what, um, really drew, drew my attention when you sent the link, um, during the Pazni assembly. And I finally, I got to see what you were kind of, yeah, I mean, I, my mind didn't necessarily, my mind didn't go, like my mind did not go here. Um, but this is great, man. Um, this is, this is great. Yeah. I think you've got a real point there that, that loving kindness. I mean, when, when we're the examples, at showing a better world, that's what's going to attract other people to you know, realize what we have to offer. Um, the, the institutions that we have are institutions of force, of coercion. And, uh, you know, we have a better way, you know, we, we can show mm -hmm. this. So one of the first projects I'm, I want to do is, is some you know, basic meals for people. Just, you know, it'll probably be in uh, coordination with some existing um, uh, you know, food banks. But I do have somebody who's going to accept some cryptocurrency and their meals are like just two to four dollars a day. And so we're gonna start out with one meal for a while and, and run that as an experiment. But you know, can we get more people that want to voluntarily give, you know, meals and um, uh, if this is coming from our platforms, then, you know, how much more attractive is that, that going to be than, you know, taxation based platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I can't wait to hear that, that loving kindness podcast because that's, that's 
absolutely a, a, a starter for real change. Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, so I guess, um, let me see here. Um, really, really great, um, I guess, uh, beginning overview so far. Um, I suppose, uh, so, um, yeah, really good overview. And, you know, po questions might pop up, so we're, we're, we're going to be on this for a while, obviously. But um, I guess, uh, t you, I guess, tell us about, uh, um, you, you told us about some use cases. Um, but there is uh, one component of this that I really like, because it's how the Pasnia network was built. Um, was via kind of a, a, a circle of trust where, you know, a vetted member has to invite another vetted, you know, a, another vetted member, essentially. Um, and, uh, you know, reputation is built in. Um, there's a lot of other cool factors um, in this. So um, I guess, uh, could you talk a little, little bit about that? Like maybe the, because uh, you're talking about building community. If, if, if you're doing these things, if you like, if, um, you know, if you're living with folks, like they've got to be, um, you know, for Pasnia, they've got to be, you know, non-coercers. And um, yeah, that's pretty, like, that's basically the foundation, you know, for it's where the use of coercion. Um, most people haven't necessarily done that, though. So it is a very important one. Um, so, like, yeah, tell us about the vetting process, kind of the reputation. The I guess, uh, kind of tell us a little bit, a little bit, a bit about those aspects. Yeah, good question. So, <clears throat> you think about the networks that you have on Google and Facebook, and they manage them. Um, we've got to get to where you own your contacts, and um, you are able to you know, just pass messages to them without going through an intermediary and without them knowing all of your friends. So in Time Safari, the way that you onboard, I wanted to hold as little of your information as possible. Um, and so the, I don't have anybody signing up with emails and, and nobody can just randomly go on because we want to encourage community. So you're already on, I'm on, we, I have a few other people who now can register others. And that's the only way that you can get on. So anybody out there who wants to get on the platform, you know, you can go to it right now. Timesafari.app.app is the URL. When you get on there, you will get an ID. But you won't be able to take any action and publish anything out there yet. You'll be able to see what people have published so far. So if you want to get on, then you'll have to contact one of us. And then, you know, you just so you know, you go to your contact screen and you add them as a contact. And then there's one of the buttons on there is register. And basically you can get on. And I don't know anything about you at that point. My server doesn't know anything about you. Um, so it does have some limits on how much activity you can use. Like, for the first month, you can only register a person a day, but after that, you can register whole groups. You know, once you have been on it, and you can see the utility of it. <clears throat> so I think it's rate limited at ten people a, a month. That uh, you can, I'm sorry, yeah, ten people a month, and you know that will grow as you know people need bigger organizations and as we get funds to support the servers. Um, so the, the reputation you have is what you confirm for other people. So when I think about reputation, you know, you can go by stars that strangers have put out onto a uh, you know, Yelp site. But when I really think about who I want to work with, then it comes down to you know how well do i know them or how well does someone recommend them right so if i want to contact you know i i i actually don't know you personally i have met you through some other people and since i trust them you know we have this connection now so on the app if you don't know somebody so like you may see a project out there that it doesn't tell you who is the originator because this doesn't like i say i don't my servers don't store any of your information but if there's people in between you if there's one person that can connect us it does know that and you can then click on that and try and find who that person is through a contact and say hey would you introduce me you know there may be cases where people are hesitant to introduce us but um, you know that's a personal thing that's between you and 
you know, the people who are connecting you. So <clears throat> the reputation that you mentioned on here isn't a number, it's not a number of stars, it's just how much is confirmed. Um, I, I wanna show another example. <clears throat> you can go to your browser right now and go to uh, endorsersearch.com. So that has a view into the back end. Well, so it was endorser, what search.com? Search, S-T-A-R-C-H. Oh, endorser. Okay, okay. So E-N-D-O-R-S-E-R, and then search, S-E-A-R-C-H dot com. Okay. And if you go there, the big button in the middle says public reports. Uh, on that, there's the best attendance that you can see that there's attendance in our bountiful volunteers community that we've logged on this platform. And you can see the top one has, there's that particular ID has attended 222 meetings at this point, but they have 517 confirmations. So, mm. you know, in our group, if it's, a, if it's a bigger group, it's like, okay, we're going to pull this report and I want to see, you know, do you have confirmations by people that you, that I know, you know, that's how I'll know that you are, you know, somebody who has actually come to the meetings a lot, you know, I, I can show this as proof to somebody else. And, you know, if somebody were to come to you and say, hey, I've been attending these meetings, <clears throat> now you have a way to check because, you know, you have a link to me and I have been confirming some of these people. So it's a pretty good likelihood that you'll be able to look at their claim of being there uh, and my confirmation of their being there so that's the link together and that's you know this this to this uh, having a proof of participation that's confirmed through your network um to me that's the real reputation does that make sense yes it definitely does and i was i've been browsing through that endorser page and yeah that's um that's also very cool. Um, yeah, I like it. <clears throat> it's like the block explorer for for uh, yeah so. for Tom Safari. <laughs> I'm a nerd with block explorer. Exactly. Explorers. See, <clears throat> this got started. <clears throat> right, right, right. This got started in uh, uh, a few years ago. Actually, there's um, some platforms that that make verifiable credentials, and so that's what I base it on. And, and it's just been storing those. And I, we've, we've printed out IDs based on these, you know, so that somebody could go and uh, scan it and see online, you know, some of the claims that, that we've made. And that's the SSI, the self-sovereign identity that underlies it. It's like, hey, this is data that I own. And all of these confirmations that people have given me is data that I own. And then I can present that to someone else and prove that, you know what, I've got this kind of history here and you can even verify it if, if you know uh, anybody in my network. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I like it, man. I like it. Um, I guess uh, a question that comes to mind um, with any software project, or I guess w one for this one, may maybe a quick a quick answer, but I'm not, is there messaging built in? Well, obviously, so I guess that's not really important here because the the point is you're meeting in person and just basically verifying you digitally. So there's it, it, at this point, it doesn't seem like there's messaging built in, and that's probably not the purpose, huh? It's not built in yet, but I think there is definitely a use for that. Um, okay. cool. What the, the latest iteration is, has so that you can <clears throat> send to someone else. So our phones typically have a share feature. So this will be one where if you go to the details of a claim in Time Safari, then you can see a space where it says, here's who's confirmed this stuff. And um, here's who can see the details if you can't see all the details. Click here and it'll pop up a little share um, prompt so that you can then send like by email or whatever is your preferred contact signal. You know, you might send this message and the message will contain a link so that they can go to that link and then see, you know, 
hey, is this information that I want to share with this other person? So the the messaging, I think, will be um, interesting, but th those are that's a big project to do messaging. I'd, I'd rather make this very targeted and simple yeah. and instead integrate with all of the other either messaging or wallet, you know, Bitcoin apps just in a, a I don't know, it's easy to use way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, I'm glad you, I'm, I, I remember doing that uh, a week ago or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I just showed that on screen. Um, the verifiable, verifiable claim details um, and you know what you can what you can see. And it, it is kind of like for this one that I, I guess I clicked on this one. He cleaned my gun for me. Um, was the at you know the giving action you know just at the end of the day like that was all that was done and then you know I could like I, I don't know that's I, it's I like it I like it and then yeah you've got all these you know the various confirmation the signatures um, etc yeah yeah so on the on the front page with all the gives the one that have on the right hand side a little hand with a heart that's a link to ones that are projects so like this contributed to something larger and uh, you can see some more details of the projects that way. Mm -hmm. So some of them are just, yeah, totally personal. And then some of them contribute to something else. And, and I hope actually to have a visualization of, hey, this uh, project with Matthew that I did, this fed into uh, the, some of the Vanu things that you're doing. And, you know, I'd like to see how that contributes to you know, future initiatives. To me, that that's rewarding. It's like, hey, I, it's not like I want to get, you know, that appreciation back. That's that is nice, but I also want to see what what is the impact that I'm making out there. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Certainly. Um, so I guess uh, um, so. Messaging is on the roadmap then at some point. Um, you know, I, oh, I guess before we get to that, are there any other any other features or um, you know specs or, or details that um, that we haven't talked about yet um, that would be worth getting to before we kind of look at the future um, and I guess more of the bigger visions. I'm sure some of those visions are kind of bigger, like mine, where the the picture is still coming together and you don't know exactly the, the full vision. But anyway, anything current um, that we didn't we didn't cover. Um, I'll point out that yeah, if you go follow the links inside here, you know, one of the places you'll end up is that endorsersearch.com, and that has a section for docs, you know, a, a link at the top left that uh, shows some of the open schemas that are being used. So <clears throat> I, I'm trying to base this on already open source public schemas that are out there. So that you know the data that you use, you know, you can share with someone else, and, and they'll understand what's inside it. Um, you know, this has the ability to download your contacts, and that's important. You already know this when you, you know, have a wallet, uh, a Bitcoin wallet. You need to back up the seed, mm -hmm. and so um, this doesn't have the um, things that are stored on a server like all of your contacts or even images. I want to add images on here so that you could add either your own image or images of projects that you share. Um, that's a future feature. So right now you have to be sure to download, you know, once you get more and more information on there, uh, make sure to, to back it up yourself. Um, you know, some of these things would be, will be nice for regular people to use. And, uh, you know, it's definitely the minimum viable product. Uh, at this point. So mm -hmm. um, those are the biggest items. I mean, the, <clears throat> I do hope that as we onboard, I'm, I'm, you know, it's building the network slowly, but I hope that these evolve into projects that people see in the community that they want to do together. And then, you know, that is what builds excitement is getting <laughs> a tipping point of people on a project that you know hey we want to do this and that builds excitement so you know hopefully that turns into some real governance um of the voluntary kind that we want to see and uh let's hope that builds strength to survive some of the uh, coming storms you know what i mean 
Well, yeah, no, no, uh, certainly, certainly. And, um, you know, something I've noticed is like the more that the more that you, um, I guess, uh, you know, obviously the, you know, the, the Serval Society, just as it was when Vaughn was created in the 60s, the Serval Society was fucking nuts back then. And it's, you know, even nuttier today. And that's going to be the trend until, you know, I don't know. There's only so there's only so nutty it can get right. Um, only so chaotic it can get before, you know. Yeah. before it changes but um you know the like the the <clears throat> the defense against that is um you know starting you know starting point back you know five or you know not even five years ago 2018 um i guess it would be you know five six years but um you know the this the beginning point when we we really didn't have people um was uh you know was like the self-sufficiency and you know independent solutions and um you know rex talked about it on on this podcast before um lily talked about it in the last uh in one of the last uh you know, couple episodes um, that like now, like a lot of us are seeing that, you know, like we could do a lot of this stuff ourselves, but it would be, it would be just like miserable and, you know, like don't want to do it. Like there's no reason to do everything, especially if you have, like, we don't have to give up, you know, like the, um, you know, that, yeah, the very, very beneficial, um, Austrian economic principle of, you know, division of labor, like, or it's not even, it's just an economic, principle, not even, not even Austrian economics, it's just a basic principle. There's no reason to out, out, get rid of that. Um, but yeah, you know, come on, we're talking about the, the important thing is that, you know, you, uh, whether hopefully, you know, obviously ideally organizing locally, um, but we're even more of like the, the big worldwide Pasnia sense. Um, that's going to be the biggest defense. Um, even if we aren't local, if we have our own logistics network, if we have, you know, our, our own nomadic networks, um, all of those, like, um, those are the, those are kind of the, I mean, what else, that's, what, what else are we, I mean, I, I don't know what else there is to do at this point, um, other than, um, yeah, we got to, we got to build out networks and, and trusted networks, um, trusted embedded networks. So, um, yeah, that, that seems to be the, seems to be the only, like the, I guess the only real way forward, for, at least in, in my mind. Um, and obviously that's, it's just, just my perspective, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I have hope for us because, you know, people talk about if AI takes over and, you know, there's nothing to do for work. Well, the scariest thing is if we've given all the ownership of everything to, BlackRock and, you know, governments, especially federal governments, that that's the scariest thing. Um, but if we get to where we really want to be, where we're, you know, only working maybe 15 hours a week, uh, you know, we, I expect we can find ways to make it, you know, more rewarding to, to work with one another, you know, Gosh, this is no, where we yeah, get to for real. enjoy more time together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's another thing. Another common, common trend is, you know, um, um, Lily's experiences too, Lily Forrester out in, in Mexico. But um, it's like uh, the I, as I know back when, like, you know, all my survival society jobs, it was, you had like, it was 40 or, you know, 40 hours a week, regardless, um, regardless of whether you had stuff to do or not. It was just wait, yeah. you basically wasting time. But when you get into like, uh, um, Yep. when you get into like uh, this more self self-directed work like uh, the like liberty type publications or pasting or whatever um the amount of shit i can get done in four hours from like 6 a.m to 10 a.m um like that's more than <laughs> what you like it, that's like that alone is more and that's i'm not saying i stop there by any means but um it's like the the amount of like it, especially if you're impassioned about it and you're not working you're not just a slave away for somebody else like there's you know, a lot of important factors um like, like i i People who have not gotten out of the struggle society in that way don't understand a lot of those those other those benefits. They've never, they've never really experienced them. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of those things yeah. that, yeah, and, and yeah, work, working with each other, working you know um, in a community, working towards you know your own common goals. Um, yeah, there's there's no comparison at all. Def, yeah. Definitely not. Yeah, and I don't know what background you came from, but uh, I. I people in the liberty society usually come from the right in, in my history uh, but we have so much overlap with people from the left who believe in communist principles and they're not necessarily terrible it's just that they go towards totalitarian kind of regimes it's like okay i'm going to give up my power to somebody else who's going to enforce this community and that's not it they too want to have uh, future where you know we're taking care of each other um it, and and so i think we have just a lot in common <laughs> with them that, that we're going to be able to build on and we can make this more attractive uh, unfortunately I, I see a lot in in the city where i am um affluence is a, a little bit of uh, an attraction like you know people find success in you know houses and comfort and um, I'm hoping with future
future generations, we can see and, and show the benefits of, hey, let's, you know, you don't want to work 40 hours a week. Now, you're not going to have all the conveniences that some of the people nowadays have, but, you know, let's learn how to live simply and spend the rest of our time doing what is really, uh, you know, building our souls and, and building connection together, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you 100. percent I'm with you 100. percent But I also, um, I I, I love the you know obviously the uh, I I thought about uh, 2020. I thought about throwing away all my digital devices. I'm glad I didn't. Um, but um, <clears throat> but so so I guess um, um, gosh, I just lost my lost my train of thought. But um, yeah, I was going to throw away my digital devices. Well, I don't know why. I th- why the I brought that up. Why was I? Oh, um, oh, that's what I was going to say. So, like, but so, so, like, I, I, I understand. Like, there's, there's something very, you know, very nice about like the, I guess the that simple living type thing. But I've also done way too much research into breakthrough energy, um, potentially potentialities. Um, and there is one update that might that happened today that I'm not, I can't share and I won't share. But um, it's big. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, like, so that like there's. So yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent with you, but then I I'm also like kind of aware of some of these um, some of these potentialities that um, like you know we're talking like so so it's the the Time Safari app is one of those things that's kind of paradigm shifting right um, from you know normal commercial commercial society. Well, this is um, like this is this would even be like paradigm shifting like I for me even even though I've been looking like I, I it's impossible to fathom like with uh, like something like uh, so we interviewed Sky Sky Hills on a, on a Bork engine. And um, if you have, I guess if you have like a hundred of these things um, in a parking lot, anyone could have their own like nuclear power plant essentially. Um, with so like the like the the possibilities, like I, I don't I don't understand it all. Like I like these dudes, like these people, Sky, um, they're on they're on another another fucking level. But um, I mean, yeah, the potential eyes are huge. Um, so I, I, yeah, I'm with you. But um, like I don't know what the future holds, and it's it's exciting. <laughs> um, it's exciting. And maybe potentially yeah. dangerous too, but yeah. nothing's fun yeah. if it's not a little dangerous. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I hope so. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm a programmer. I love data and algorithms. And uh, in the past, it's just been, hey, me head down a computer. But you know, get older, realize, oh yeah, I really do enjoy other people when uh, I find friends who you know have the same interests. And so but just magnify that, just, you know, grow where you're planted. And, and uh, that, that made me realize how much, you know, <clears throat> we, we talk about trading things. Um, but if we are more in the mindset of giving, you know, I, I've heard that we provide, we provide enough for everybody in the world to eat. It's just a distribution problem. And, and so much of it is because we're holding on tight to what we have because we're afraid we may not have it later. But, you know, we, we know that the more we give, the more it will come back to us later. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, the one overarching project uh, I'm working on is the lives of gifts. It's to help people realize that uh, we have, you know, voluntary interaction coupled with, you know, giving and seeing the, the results and that could be the basis for the future. I'd uh, love to talk about that initiative at some point. Lives of giving dot org. Yeah, if you want to, the, if you want to, if you want to do that now, yeah. Um, um, time so far as the, yeah, if you want to do that now, please do. Um, yeah, I mean, tell tell us because I, I did bring that up on screen once. Um, that was one of the tabs I browsed to. So, um, yeah, if you want to take a few minutes and and talk about that, feel free. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so for me, like the, just, just seeing what, uh, what I've got now after I've worked, you know, 25 years in industry, um, I have enough for my family, you know, what do I really want? And, you know, it's, Hey, I want to make sure that everything I have is distributed in, in a way that, uh, rewards people around me. Now I have a belief that, if you know especially those of us who have some extra you know if we will start building that society of giving you know that that's another way of getting to the voluntary systems that we want so 
I, I do believe, you know, not in giving more than you can handle. You know, I don't plan to uh, give up all of my food so that I'm insecure, but, mm. um, you know, get to where I'm giving as much as I can. So, that, you know, hopefully that attracts more people who want to be in that mindset. And, you know, we build in these voluntary communities. Part of the reason for that is to get away from debt. I mean, the reason a lot of people are in the hamster wheel and, you know, exhausted every day is because they have to work eight hours because they have to make money to pay off debts just to live. Um, we need to get past that. We need to get to where it's, um, you know, we're paying it forward. We're um, not, you know, our children are able to live without debt in their lives. Uh, you know, that's one way I hope we can break down the banking system even faster or at least be able to survive better when it all crashes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, certainly. Certainly. Um, and yeah, that that's, I guess, another thing that's, that's yeah, I mean, so like uh, we were talking about gratitude earlier um, and uh, abundance too. Like, uh, yeah, I have no doubt. Um, there's no way, like there, there's no way with that, you know, there's not enough food to, to feed the world. That's, that's crazy because the amount of food you can produce on just like an acre of land and that's that. That might just be even factoring in, like uh, you know, like normal gardening or home, like uh, uh, normal gardening or permaculture methods. Um, but there's, I mean, yeah, there's there's other things too. Um, <clears throat> I mean, um, abundance um, in addition to gratitude. Um, you know, and we're talking about, um, uh, you know, um, you know, feeding, you know, feeding homeless or you know, feeding feeding those, you know, feeding those in our community that need food. Um, yeah, it's uh, um, the abundance is totally possible. Um, the abundance is totally possible um, using things like electroculture. Um, which, yeah, and it's, it's funny. These aren't, these aren't new things. They're forgotten. There's forgotten, te uh, forgotten techniques. Um, yeah. Using bamboo copper antennas and, oh, yeah. um, these sorts of things where like the pictures that I, I the book that I bought, um, on electroculture is from, like 1920s. And, um, the pictures that you see of like the, like the sunflowers, um, like I've seen sunflowers, but they're like, oh, I don't know. Like they're pretty, they're, they're small. Like they're, they're pretty small, but these ones are like the size of like a big dude's, like a big dude's torso. And it's like holy shit, that's a big sunflower. Um, like the 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 like the 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 bit the, the hugeness and and the yield. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely a big deal. Um, so yeah, abundance and gratitude and all those things. And um, with with the uh, the Time Safari app, um, making these connections and making these possibilities happen. Um, it's really huge, man. I, I definitely appreciate you know your vision and putting together and all that because I, I know. Um, well, I know for me, at least a lot of these things were, were a long, long time in the coming and the end was definitely not, or the end or even the middle wasn't even a foresight. So, um, I'm glad you're here, however you got here. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks. I, um, that made me think while you were talking <clears throat> how a lot of people are afraid of providing for others. Um, you know, okay, they're just going to waste the money or, you know, if, if we give them, everything they need if ever given them everything they want they're you know gonna uh i don't know abuse the rest of us and i i think it's worth pointing out i mean people get into violence and taking because they're afraid of the future um, but if we get into more of caring for each other and you know if everybody had some basic level of you know sustenance for themselves, you know, they didn't have to worry about. I mean, how much does that ease people's minds and you know make it so that they're not you know afraid to where they they need to steal? Now, there's always going to be people who are going to take advantage, or you know, just their appetites are never satisfied, and they're, so they're going to try and steal or whatever. But you know, that's not 95 percent of the population. And you know the rest of us will find great ways of protecting ourselves from from those kind of people. But anyway, yeah, I uh, um, I'm glad we we think alike on on yeah. this one, and I, I I look forward to doing more projects that we can. You know, I, I can't wait to watch your projects. Um, oh, let me give another mm -hmm. uh, point on Time Safari. Uh, I hope to make it integrated with lots of other systems. I mean, people in your groups are working on, say, GitHub, and uh, they have projects listed out there. Um, and this is another place to log projects. So 
um, for example, there's Freedom Cells that has an introduction to people in, in, uh, with the map. Mm -hmm. And that's a great service. Um, sure. I hope to make it so that there's more private data on that. And I'd, I'd love to, to contact them and, and work with them. I've, I've tried. So if anybody else can help me make a mm -hmm. connection to Romero, that would be very much appreciated. Um, but there's, well, there's I could, space I, for that because I could have helped you with the connection with uh, Derek where? before long ago. But yeah, I'm not sure if I could do that now. <laughs> okay. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, so, you know, because Time Safari is more of the, hey, you're, after you've made connections, you know, how do you verify the data? Um, on your map, for example, I think yours is a very good case of where, hey, you are an authority of uh, some of this data. And so, you know, if you were to confirm some of that on a platform with verifiable credentials, mm -hmm. then that would be an authority that other people would, you know, look to um, for verifiable data. So there's, you know, each of these serves different purposes. There's lots of different platforms for them, but um, I, I expect we're going to be able to integrate them so that, you know, jumping back and forth, you find utility, you know, in the, the right platform where it resides you know what i mean yeah yeah certainly certainly um so yeah i guess yeah again more areas where we're in agreement um oh yeah obviously the, a lot of these things are just first steps um like pasnia list like i, I do want to have like a public because it's good for the pasnia network um like we have there is a totally public layer of the pasnia network um and the pasnia list like an open craigslist for a second realm is i like that idea but i also am really a huge fan of like um, it would be cool to be able to plug in like to that, you know, quote unquote API. That's the, usually that's how it's, you just plug into the API and pull the posts kind of how I understand it. Um, not, I'm not trying, like, I don't know if that's, I don't know if I would necessarily want to do it with the Pasnia list, but I'm, I, I definitely think like there's, um, in terms of like more of a longer term vision, like replicate, duplicating these services on like Tor network, um, and the deep web and things like that are, right. are, are, or even more important. Like not even like th these are just, th this, this is a WordPress, like I'm not going to. I'm not going to like try to act like I programmed anything. I don't do that shit. Um, but it's, it's a you know, really, a really good WordPress app, really ba basic as shit. And it does a lot. It's like, wow. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, yeah it's crazy how, 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 how easy some of these things are. And the same, it was the same case with the map. I thought we, I thought like the first step was to like download 200 gigabytes of the map data, but no, I just didn't understand, um, mm. the U map. There's a, yeah, there's a, a Dutch outfit or something that has a, an open street map instance and you can make your own map and export all of the data files. So all they do is provide the, the base, the base layer, and then you add the layers on yeah. top of it and you export them and you can import them again. Um, eventually, uh, it eventually, um, trusted PASNI members, not going to do this for a while. Um, but it, it might only be like 10 or 15 people at, at the start where they can actually go in and edit the map mm -hmm. and add their own markers. Um, but I've mm -hmm. got to find a better way to do that with permissions and things. It's an open, it's open source, which is fucking fantastic. I was going to do, um, I was going to do this for, um, side note here. A lot of the stuff I demo for this, or a lot of the stuff I do in the second round, my demo <laughs> at the distillery, because I'm uh, at my, my day job at the distillery, cause I'm their IT guy. So like we need a map <laughs> to show all the locations for like uh -huh. where people can buy our liquor. And, uh, <clears throat> so I was like, well, yeah, yeah. so I guess I'll look into Google maps and see what that's, see what that looks like. It would have been like a six month, like this is like my perception, like a six month development project, like crazy fucking difficult, like just crazy difficult, right, right, right. never, ha never would happen. So I was kind of frustrated and I was like, all right, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was like, wait a second, I know what the solution to this. So I put together the map and it looks beautiful. That one's public. I might even share that, um, just to show a demo of like a, a big public map. Um, but uh, I'm not sure that in the show notes, but, uh, yeah, that one, it, it was, it's fantastic. Like the, the, whatever this Dutch outfit is that provides all this base layer is fantastic. Um, truly is fantastic. And they aren't hosting yeah. anything. Um, all they're doing is letting you add data to the map that you can export and import. And then you embed it in the site that you want to. So it's crazy. Open source wins. Um, cool. we're, we're getting to the point where it, open source is not only like more yeah. user friendly, it's the better, it's the better alternative, um, to most things. So, Again, another positive yeah. about where we're going in the future, and it's from work uh, from folks like you and Matthew and uh, and Bastard Chris and folks like that who um, actually know what they're doing in the programming realm because I don't know shit, and I don't really want to at this point. I was going to learn myself. To, I was going to teach my, teach myself to code, but it's not going to happen. I got people, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's 
there's other ways to spend your time. Good. No, I'm glad things are coming uh, to be, you, you know, so useful that almost everyone can, you know, get in, make a map or get in and make Excel formulas, you know, and, and uh, mm -hmm. that, I hope we make it just really ridiculous easy. Yep. Yep. And that's the, the, the goal at the end of the day is user friendliness, because if you can't use it, then it does, doesn't matter. Um, that's why I love the, the, the right. Calyx ghost phones. I love the Calyx ghost phones there. It's, I didn't even come from Android, but, um, yeah, if you're an Android user, um, I've, I get, it's one of the most common fears and it's one of my most common fears switching over to, to a ghost phone is like your daily phone or like a Linux machine is your only, you know, as your main machine and you don't know mm -hmm. how to do a lot of this stuff. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot, I've been doing it for the ghost phone has been like two or three years now. And yeah, it's been a year and a half for the, for the computer. So it's crazy. Wild. I love it. Cool. But anyway, um, rambling aside, Trent, um, I guess, uh, was there anything else in the, in, in the, uh, in the roadmap, um, for, uh, Time Safari or any, I mean, any of your projects, man. I, I mean, this isn't just about Time Safari. Any, any, what's your, I guess, uh, anything else you want to tell us about, uh, your future visions, uh, on whatever projects that you mentioned or maybe have not mentioned? Yeah. Um, I'll just I'll stop there. I I hope that Time Safari is something that I can make really useful, and so I'm, I am <clears throat> focusing on that. I Perfect. want to show it around here in my community, but you know my virtual community as well. You know I want those of you out there who see it. Uh, you know if it especially if it makes sense. Um, let's onboard you um, you know get in touch with somebody who has it and uh let's hopefully make it really useful for not just you but the people around you, you mm -hmm. know, if, if we make this front screen where hey i am just people around me can see what um gratitude that i'm showing you know just growing that would be a great achievement i think Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I want to start with. Um, I'm glad I have all of the other pieces in there, but uh, I, I hope to make this really useful and I you know, would love to talk more with anybody else who wants to try it or grow it somehow, and uh, especially in maybe clubs. Um, that could be that could be a place where it could be useful as well. So, yeah. All right. Well, Trent, um, don't want to keep you longer, man. It's, it's, it's been about an hour. Um, uh, yeah, I guess uh, the, the website is timesafari.app. Um Anything else before I let you go? Uh, no, I'll, I'll give a challenge to you. Try and uh, onboard somebody else. Like, add, have them go to the site, add to your contacts, and then see if you can click that register button to register them. And uh, you can tell me later how easy that was. And I, I bet it's yeah, I bet it's probably pretty easy. Yeah. Through any other difficulty. Ten four, right on, man. Thanks, man. This hey. is great. Really appreciate that and, uh, all the other thoughts that you've, you've, you've given along the way. Hey, cheers, man! It was a it was a pleasure, and I look forward to uh, um, getting together and however long it is, and with an update. And I also look forward to hopefully seeing you in more passing assemblies because you know, it's always a pleasure to have you. Right on, right on. Yep. Cheers. All right, guys. Um, so there you have it, Trent Larson, uh, Time Safari dot app. Uh, as well as as well as others, it'll be in the show notes. Um, everything will be in the show notes um, and the show guide as usual. But uh, I guess to close out, um, just a, a, a few things that I haven't really mentioned much. There's there's been a lot, and I guess the first the first and most important thing is just thank everyone for um, helping Kyle, um, my old my former and future coast Kyle, which I know I didn't know it's gonna be future coast, um, but. Um, no, it's great. Um, within a day or two, he, like, he, he, he reached out last, last ditch effort and within a day or two, uh, well, I guess a couple of days. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he reached, he, he reached his goal and, and he's in, he's in much, you know, a better place, um, financially, you know, that was one of the biggest things. So I, big thanks to all those in the past year network. I mean, that's the, the biggest demonstration. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's blowing his mind. So, um, thank you guys. Um, truly, truly appreciative. Um, and, uh, you know, much more, much more like that in the future. Um, but anyway, a um, couple, I guess just a few announcements. Um, I have list, I, ha I, I now have and have listed on the LUA uh, Publications website, um, the Paul Rosenberg, uh, you know, fiction bundle, uh, Lodging of Wayfaring Men and The Breaking Dawn, um, both now available via Liberty Tech Publications. I think it's the only place you can get a bundle of it. Um, so you can get them on Amazon. 
Um, but the only place you can get both of them in one place for a discount is the Elliott Publications website, to my knowledge. Um, so, yes, terrific, amazing crypto anarchist fiction. Um, a lot of the stuff we're talking about today, um, you know, like uh, anarchist fiction is, is extremely important for a lot of reasons. But one of the biggest reasons is that it's it gets your mind churning um, on possibilities, stuff that, you know, um, it gets your mind churning. And, and, and it's great. Um, and Paul Rosenberg's book, like he is he is he is the, the legendary OG. Um, for this, Lodging of Wayfaring Men uh, uh, specifically. So um, you can pick up both of those books at libertyattack.com. Next, uh, the first passing gathering for 2024 or year, I think it's year five, year five actually now. I think it's year five um, in the Pasnia, you know, years uh, system. But uh, the first passing gathering, the great Pasnian eclipse happening April 5th to 9th here at the Veritas Note of the Free Republic. I will have a great view from the uh, little Egypt part of Southern Illinois. Uh, any and all vetted self-liberators, Pasnians are welcome and encouraged to attend. Uh, and if you need if you need help getting vetted, uh, just send me an email, coordinatorpasnia.com, uh, or DM, uh, wherever it's uh, wherever it works for you. And uh, finally, I, I should do something I never do. Um, it's crazy. The, the amount of times I've promoted my book over the past couple of years on the podcast is nuts. It might have been like two or three times. But uh, yeah, I got another box of my book, Finding the Strategy for Self-Liberation. Um, this is the second edition with a new foreword uh, by Ben Stone, the Bad Quaker, uh, plus a new introduction and some new chapters. Uh, and pertaining to the new foreword by Ben Stone that was related to the Eric Bros discussion earlier that I don't really want to get into, but a um, few folks might be curious, so I'll just drop that line in there. But um, you can place your order today at libertyattack.com forward slash Fawny book, uh, libertyattack.com forward slash Fawny book, or find it on Amazon if you prefer to order it there. Uh, the free audio book is also out on this podcast feed uh, if you want to uh, take a listen. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for being here today and uh, hope to see you in the second realm soon. Cheers. Vanu means relative physical and vulnerability to coercion. Vanu is a contraction of voluntary and not vulnerable. Vanu is somewhat like freedom or security, but those words mean many different things to different people. Rather than argue about what those words ought to mean, I speak of Vanu. Coercion includes murder, mayhem, slavery, robbery, rape, extortion, pollution, any physical interference with peaceful activities of another, whether by individuals or organizations. Coercion, especially institutionalized forms such as war, regimentations, and taxes, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past attempts at solution have been top-down efforts to change society as a whole. Since the days of Babylon, there have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. At most, such efforts bring temporary relief. Usually they have little effect. Often, they make matters worse. Vanu life represents a different approach to the problem. Vanu life does not waste space scolding government officials or proclaiming how society ought to be. Vanu life speaks to you as an individual or small group and suggests ways you can avoid exploiting and being exploited. As you reduce the vulnerability, not only do you help yourself, indirectly you also help others by decreasing support of criminal institutions. Vanu is not necessarily only a few. Vanu will expand as there are more people willing to do. A Vanuan is a person who has achieved relative invulnerability to coercion. There are many kinds. Some live in the wilderness, where outsiders rarely go. Others live under the earth. Others move from place to place, living in vans, campers, buses, boats, or tents. Some have been Vanu for ages, people such as gypsies, mountain men, hobos, seminoles. Others are recent refugees from the dying cities. This issue describes some of the equipment and techniques used. In future issues, I hope you'll add your knowledge to what is in here. Vanu Life. How to live and let live. Out of sight and mind of those unwilling to let live. By people who are doing it. To order your paperback copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Or to download this publication for free, visit vanupodcast.com forward slash VL.